deals with two new functions, exponential and logarithmic functions. And as I promised, these are the last two functions we are going to look at this semester. Okay, so let's start with exponential. So 4.1 exponential functions. Okay, what do you think a function could be called exponential? For the same reason we call this function absolute value. It has an absolute value. For the same reason we call this function the square root, because it has a square root. So obviously this has an exponent, exponent or it's exponential, right? So the variable is the exponent. The variable is the exponent. So how will it look like? As you see, x is the variable. This is called the base of the exponential function. This is a number. Given or not, it's just a number. The variable is the exponent. So that's the exponential function. But it has several issues. Before we continue, let's talk about the issues. And here are the issues. Before we decide, I just want to ask you a question. Can I raise 1 to the fourth power? Can I raise 0, let's say, to the third, 33rd power? Uh, can I raise negative 2 to the 50th power? The question is not to give me the answer, but the question is, are these allowed? Are they possible? Can I determine 1 to the 4th? Anyone? Yes. Sure. Can I determine 0 to the 3rd third po third, third power? Yes. Can I raise negative 2 to the 50th power? 50th power? Yes. They exist. However, these three situations, and you notice, the base is 1, the base is 0, and the base is negative, not allowed for exponential functions. So this is the issue, or issues. I cannot have 1 as the base, I cannot have 0 as the base, and I cannot have a negative number as the base. Although these exist, they're not allowed in an exponential function. And if you're anxious to know why, I'll give you the short answer. This other function will not exist. So if we allow that here, then the other function will not exist. And how come they are related? Of course they are related, because the exponential is the inverse function of the log, and the log is the inverse function of the exponential. So if we allow in an exponential function a base of 1, 0, or a negative number, this other function collapses, doesn't exist. So that's the main reason. OK, so now the question is, what is allowed? If I can have these, we can have, for f of x, a to the x, we can have two only two options. One option in which the base is a number greater than 1, but not 1. And the other option when the base is a tiny number between 0 and 1, because it cannot be negative. And it cannot be 0 or 1. So, then it means that this function, yes, questions, any questions? Any questions? Okay, so that means that this function has two shapes.
And you can say, or I can ask you, do we know other functions with two shapes? Of course we do. Here's one. This is a function with two shapes. Here's another. Two shapes. And I can go on forever. Okay, so this one will have two shapes. The first one, when the base is greater than 1, and the second one, when the base is between 0 and 1. So let's take a look at both situations. So when the base is greater than 1, let's look at a simple, very simple example, like 2 to the x. Does this fit this category? Yes, it does because the base is 2 and 2 is greater than 1. Okay, I want to graph this function. I'm going to start like always. When I graph a function, what do I start with? Always. What do I need to determine? Always. First. Anyone? When we graph a function, what do we need to start with? What is the first step? Always, for any function. The answer is, we look for the do do what? Thank you. Well, this is a nice function. Friendly. friendly function. No headaches. It doesn't give me any headache. I don't have to think about the domain. I'll just say anything goes. Remember the domain is for x, not for the base. The base is fixed. is a given number. Okay, so then I'm going to plug in some numbers. Let's say negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Way too many, but that's okay. So I'm going to plug in negative 2. So remember 2 raised to negative 2 is 1 over 2 raised to the second power, which is 1 over 4. So this is 1 over 4. And the same way when I plug in negative 1, I have 1 over 2. Same way when I plug in 0, 2 raised to 0 is 1. When I plug in 1, and when I plug in 2. And now I'm really interested in the end behavior this way and this way. So let's look at what can the end behavior be. So 1 over 4, 1 over 2, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Where am I going this way? Infinity, very good. Positive infinity. Perfect. Now, the other side. 4, 2, 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over 16, 1 over 32, 1 over 64, uh, um, a piece of cake divided by 128 people, a uh, piece of cake divided by 10,000 people, a piece of cake divided by a million people. How much will I get? Negative when I divide positive over positive, I could never get negative. So I can only get nothing. They can take my, the cake away from what I <laughs> Right? Is that clear? I can only get zero. They can, then it means that I owe them cake. <laughs> Good. So this is an interesting situation. We've never seen this before. This is a horizontal asymptote at negative infinity only. Let's graph this part, this situation. So here's the graph. So 2, negative 2, it will be difficult for me to uh, present uh, one fourth. I'm going to just say it's right here, and then one half, and that's here, and then one, 
and then two, one, two, and two, four. Notice that I only say when you graph a function with asymptotes, we have to graph the asymptote first. If this is an overkill. We know y equals zero. And this is the graph of two to the x. Coronavirus follows this exponential function, by the way. That's why one day, one day there are 10, the next day there are 300, the next day there are 5,000. This is the fastest increase possible. I didn't think I would, we would go through this in real life, but that's, that's what happens. Okay? Good, so let's look at the other possibility, the other possible shape. This time we're going to use, let's say, one half raised to the x. Exactly zero is less than a for the second one. It's this. It's the second option. So we, we looked at the first option. So now we look at the second option. A tiny between zero and one. So now A is 0.5. It's a number between 0 and 1, and I chose 1 half. Is that better, everyone? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So then, the same thing. It doesn't give me any headache. I don't have to think. I'm going to use the same numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I'm going to plug in carefully, but because now I have a fraction raised to a negative number, that's OK. So I have 1 half raised to negative 2. Remember, this is 1 over 1 half squared, which is 1 over 1 fourth, which is 4, when you flip. So this is 4, this is 2, this is still 1, but now this is 1 half, and this is 1 fourth. Stop if you have questions. Is this okay? Is this okay? Yes. Okay. Um, of course, if you have time, I will invite you for the 5 o'clock session because now you see this the first time, it will be even easier for you if you watch it the second time. So I highly recommend that I always invite you if you have time, if you can. Okay. So now, let's identify the end behavior. Tell me where I'm going. 4, 2, 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, a cake divided by a million people. How much will I get? Anyone? Zero. Very good. Y equals 0 horizontal asymptote only at infinity. Let's go this way. Uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 10 million, infinity, very good, very good, so let's graph this shape side by side so we can compare. So I have a negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 1 is 2, and 0 is 1, and 1 is 1 half, and of course now I'm having difficulties. So this is 1 half raised to x. Very good. So at this point, I would like to look at both graphs. And let's answer a couple of questions. So number one, domain. Both functions have a nice domain, friendly function, no problems. They exist. They exist everywhere, no discussion there. Number two, range. Can anyone give us the range of these functions or the exponential function, pure exponential function? Because we're going to look at transformations in a minute, of course. Zero to infinity. Very good. Number three, uh, vertical asymptote. Yes or no? No. 
No. Very good. How can it have a vertical asymptote if it's defined everywhere? Very good. Uh, number four. Uh, ver uh, horizontal asymptote. Zero. Yes. Y equals zero, but be careful. You have to be careful here. This one has the horizontal asymptote at negative infinity, and this one has the horizontal asymptote at positive infinity. Good. Uh, number five, x intercept. X intercept? Yes or no? No. No, of course not. Six, y intercept? We are talking about pure exponential function, no transformations. Yes? Y intercept? Yes. Always 0, 1. We are talking about pure exponential with no transformations. Okay. 7. Uh, 1 to 1. Yes. Yes. By the horizontal line test, every y will have only one x. Every y will have only one x. Very good. Indeed. One to one, yes. Seven. Does it have f inverse? Does it exist? Yes. yes. How come? Because it's one to one. What do we graph? Let's suppose now we have, we want to graph the function and its inverse on the same coordinate system. Every time we do that, we have to graph something else. What is that something else that I'm referring to? The symmetry? Uh, you mean y equals x. What is this? Every time we graph the function and its inverse on the same coordinate system, we have to start by graphing y equals x every time. Good. So now I want to graph. We don't know what the graph, uh, what the function is, but can you please give me a couple of points so I can graph the inverse of this and a couple of points, maybe three, to graph the inverse of that. One zero. Very good. Reverse everything. One zero is here. Perfect. One zero. Two one. Four two. Two one. The reverse of this. Four two, etc. This is F inverse. The inverse function of two to the x. What do you notice here? What is the domain of the inverse function? Can anyone give us the, the domain of the inverse function? Negative eight to the five infinity? Oh, zero to the five to the infinity? Yes. Yeah. So as we know, that's how it works. The domain of this function becomes the range of this function. The range of this function becomes the domain of this function, and we see that. Zero to infinity. I don't like this function, you know, quote, you know, um, I'm just trying to be funny or silly. So I like this function, it's defined everywhere. This is a function I have to worry about. For this function, I have to worry this inverse function, I have to worry the way I worry for this fun of, of this function and the way I worry about this function. This one has to have positive or zero. This one cannot have negative one. This is the last and the third function that has a restricted domain. So it joins the group of square root or even root and rational. So this function, the inverse of 2 to the x, 
the square root and the radical function, all these three are part of a category of functions that quote unquote require attention. Okay, so now please give me a couple of points here so I can graph this one. The inverse of one half to the x. And then I have one more thing to add here. Number nine, increasing, decreasing. Okay, so just give me a couple of points here. And be careful. Remember what we said, when a function crosses, that is one to one, crosses the line y equals x, its inverse has to cross at the same point. Why? Five, five, two, two. Two, two, one, one, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven. So if you reverse that point, you still get the same point. So I reverse this over here, and so on and so forth, and this is the inverse function of one half to dx. So let's also draw a conclusion about increasing decreasing. When the base of the function, of the exponential function, is greater than one, both the function and the inverse are doing what? Increase. All the time. For base greater than 1. Excellent. Now let's look at the other one. The function and its inverse, when the base is less than 1, what do they do? Decrease. Yes, very good. So, increasing all the time with the base greater than 1, decreasing all the time with a tiny base. Good, so now let's look at um, uh, one function with transformations. Let me see.